Hello, welcome to Quack Little. Thank you for being here. Today we're talking all things Crokinole. Probably my favorite dexterity game of all time, period. Some, and I'm not just saying that. Some would say it's the greatest game on earth. Some would say things like that. I'm not just saying that because I'm sitting now next to Jeremy Tracy, the creator, designer, handcrafter of Tracy boards, some of the best Crokinole boards in the industry. I, I mean, you all make the professional circuit boards, correct? We are the official board builders for the World Crokinole Championships. Yeah, so they're about as smooth and succulent and have production quality and standards above anything I would consider succulent. reasonable. Succulent, I like it. Have you ever done mouth mouth like mouth like taste on this? Just just a one big glossy lick across the surface? Can't kiss and tell, man. Yeah, can't kiss and tell, great. But Crokinole, as the classic approach, the head-to-head -head two player game is not the only way to experience this game. It's not the only way to play. And so I wanted to pull together a list of 10 different ways to interact with your board, starting with the classic, getting up to the weird, eccentric, and expensive, and pulling back down to just the fun and chaotic. So that's this video, 10 different ways to experience probably one of the best value games in your collection. Now, these boards can run 250, 350, all the way up to a grand a piece, right? Yeah, our boards, and I'll talk in Canadian dollars, our boards are 325 or 350, depending on which edition you go with that we have. Yeah, and then if you get fancy extra stuff, they can scale up beyond that. Yep. And so this is not a simple purchase. That being said, the cost per play is shockingly low mm -hmm. because you'll get this to the table so much the light, like this, this is a game that just becomes an heirloom piece, yep. right? And with these new ways to play, the terms, like in terms of what value you can get out of it, for me, that, that just continues to skyrocket. All right, mm -hmm. let's talk. We're starting with classic mode, right? Yep. The simplest way to play, head to head, two buttons each, technically would be sitting across from each other. Yes. You're going to be playing, it's 12 buttons on your row. The way you can play with 12, that's not wrong, but the way we play in the NCA for competitive play, it's eight buttons each when you play singles. Eight buttons each, and what you're doing is you're shooting into the center. Woo! I know, it's not too bad. You you're shooting practicing. into the center, you're doing your best to kind of line up around this. It's kind of a mix of uh, curling. Uh, I call it darts a little bit because you're okay. scoring, scoring points based off of the ring yep. that your buttons end up in. And then you've got a cornhole style points cancel each other out. And it's a race either to first victor of a series of rounds or points to 100. Yes. So that's the classic way. Now, there's also the uh, the second thing we have. Right, is 2v2. Kay. So you're playing as partners. So if Jesse and I were partners, we'd sit across from each other. We'd have six blue buttons each. Our opponents would sit here and here. They would have six orange buttons each. They don't have, we've got, I think, 11 different colors on our site to choose from. Sure. But yeah, uh, point is you have a different color than your opponents. You go clockwise around the table and uh, you play doubles You um, and you trash talk a bit. Yeah, 2v2 is one of my favorite ways to approach Crokinole because it, it makes it so that your angles are not as painful as they can be when it's head-to-head. Head-to-head head -head is a strategic game. It's all about, about the way you're hitting and where you're leaving your puck, kind of like pool in a way. Yep. With 2v2, it's trash talk, it's fun. You can counterbalance players, like the professional player sitting next to us, by giving them the worst player in the oh, group. did you ever. And everyone can <laughs> still have a blast with it, which is nice, because yeah. it pulls people back and yep. forth. And if I'm shooting from here, or my partner's shooting from here, every angle, it becomes a conversation about what's the best puck to hit yep. instead of one that's just like tucked completely out of the way. Yes. And I need to be as proficient as possible to like even stand a chance yeah. of spinning through there. Yeah. Right? In, in singles play, someone could be left trying to make the same shot. Like if I'm trying to shoot over there, I could be trying to make that shot three turns well, in a row. Well, not you. Right. But no, me. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but if we're playing doubles, let's say I miss that. My opponent shoots, and then you shoot, and you're, you. I mean, that's a dead simple shot for yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, your partner's able to clean it up. So those yeah. are the classic ways to play. Now we're getting into the ways that even I have not explored fully. So let's talk about, let's talk about some, of the, some of the more complex stuff. We need to explore. So uh, the next one, and this is a really, really fun variation, we call this three-player singles. So obviously you're gonna have one quadrant that sits empty, that doesn't really affect anything. Okay. So one, two, three players. I prefer to play this with six buttons each. There's no tournaments done with three players, so there's no official rules, but yes. I just find the six buttons each, it, it just makes the rounds a little more snappy. The rules are the same, a valid shot. So one of the most important rules with a valid shot is um, if there's no opponent's button on the board, you have to play to the middle 
middle, it has to end up within or at least touching this line. Sure. If there is an opponent's button on, you have to make contact with the opponent's button during this turn. So when you're playing three player singles, obviously you've got two opponents. So it, let's say you've got a button here and Devin's playing and he's got a button there and it's my turn. I, I need to shoot one of your guys. Either opponent's button yes. viable. It's it doesn't have to be the higher one. It does I mean, and their strategy comes into play. Okay, who's winning this round right now? So who do I want to take out? Mm. And uh, one of the biggest differences is rather than like, normally if we're playing, you're gonna want to shoot a, a, a take out twenty. But when you're playing three player singles, you would rather do just a touch twenty so that the next player has They're a button they have the to opponent they button. have to shoot rather than leaving an open board for an open 20. So it's just sense? it's just a little different strategy, a fun variation and you can do the scoring however you want. Hmm. You can usually you do the traditional point scoring with that and so only uh, one person's pulling points up. Yeah. Yeah. And the other two cancel down. Again, there's no official rules. So even if you're playing like regular 1v1 or 2v2, I always say I'm a huge fan of host rules. If I, I, when we did three player, I believe we did top gets top points, second got whatever points they were above the lowest, and lowest got zero. Right. Yeah. So that's a, that's a simple way to do it. The way we've done it when we do that, the other <laughs> rule that we put in place in our house, whoever's winning has to shoot first in the next round. It just makes it harder because it, it's hard if, if you're shooting first. Do you find first. the first sh shots not like you find the, the the last shots the advantage, not the first shot? The ha the hammer shot is definitely an, an advantage, but mm. if you play three player singles, then it's even more of an advantage. Interesting, because two you people shoot, are going yeah. right right after yeah, you. Yeah, two people are going after you. So there we have round. it. Yep. Number three, three player singles. What else are we doing? Slight variation on that one, but four player singles. So that's when you've got a fourth player. All the same rules apply. It okay. just gets even more chaotic. You've got four colors of buttons. And you can hit anyone's colors. It's not like yes. you're fighting the person across from you or anything like that. Nope. You hit. If there's any opponent's button on the board anywhere, you need to make contact. So you're never getting a clean open 20 shot. It's pretty unusual. <laughs> Somebody either made a so. great shot or a horrible shot in order to create an open board. Do you like four player <laughs> singles more than duos? Like, what would, what's your variance in terms of play? And you know what? With all these things we're talking about here today, they're fun. Okay. But I'm a purist. Sure. Yeah, I, I, yeah, singles and just straight up singles and doubles are my favorite ways to play. Classic Grover. But it, it is, uh, yeah. I mean, once I've played a few rounds of four player singles, it's like, all right, let, let's play some doubles now. Sure. Uh, but yeah, it's it's a fun variation and some people prefer it. So yeah. Um, cool. All yeah. right, moving on to number five. What are we doing there? Well, I mean, we had to make number five the five hole board. All right, grab some pucks. Let's uh, let's talk about this a bit because this is something that is the expensive part of the conversation. This is a second crokinole board that people should be technically adding to their collection, and I believe you're the only manufacturer who is working on making this, right? I I don't know that to be true. That we know it, of right yeah, now. That, yeah. that I'm aware of. I did some YouTube searching, Google searching, okay. and I did not see evidence of other five hole boards in existence. Yeah. This is a brand new thing that you all are uh, bringing to the marketplace, and here you can play any of the variants we're talking about with the caveat that instead of hitting people off the board, you now want to get their pucks into these little red zones, because these red zones, just like the center one, give you points, except these give you negative points. 10. So yes. the game transforms here. Yes. And in all honesty, I, I I don't particularly enjoy playing this 1v1. Sure. It, they just don't seem to come into play as much. They're all like they, the accidental mishap and yep. that's how they happen. Yeah. Whereas in doubles, uh, yeah, they come into play a lot and it gets... Yeah. Uh, because doubles, you, you have more clearance, you have more angles, and instead of, like I said, instead of knocking someone off, you might choose to leave a puck there that your opponent would hit otherwise so that you can try to get... Yep. That one in. Yep. So what happens, and I mean, if you ever watch the competitive Crokinole play from the World Championships or the NCAA Championships on Crokinole Center, uh, you will notice that the pros keep the board really clean. There's usually only one yeah. or two buttons on, but what'll happen is there's a situation like this and I go, well, I could knock that off or I could be spiteful and I could knock them into the 10, but that's a tough, a bump and run into, into a hole is a yeah. tough shot to make. So the board just gets super crazy, chaotic, busy, um, and it ends up, you end up with a lot more circus shots. There's just more options. There's more, yeah. yeah it just, and it can be really mean. And if you accidentally, oh hit and leave your puck in a vulnerable area. Like I had playing against West the other night. I kept leaving my pucks right there. West is playing on this side of the board. He keeps doing this. Just every shot, and we lost 50 points because he just kept sinking them in. Yep. 
Yes. So yeah, absolutely Brutal. it's mean. Um, I find the trash talk goes up about three octaves when uh, when, yeah. you're, when you're playing the Bible. Because you can now be purposefully vindictive. Yes. Oh, 100%. Yeah. yeah. And I, again, I really enjoy this. Uh, I'm back to a purist, but it, it, it is a really fun variation. Now, these are going to be available over on your site. Yes. And from my side of things, these are going to be things that people get in addition to the classic crokinole board that they yeah. have, right? Yeah. But, you know. it's, not like, it's not like you have to, but I mean, I would think of this as, as someone's uh, second uh, yeah. second board, not their first. Yeah. Um, although I know people who only own a five hole and they're quite happy with that. Sure, so, sure. Yeah, I don't think there's a wrong way to play crokinole. I hear. That's, that's, that's probably true. <laughs> Number six, what are we doing? Number six. Two new products that are about to go up on our website, not my creations, okay. but um, and this is so These are other creators that you're just gonna be hosting on your website. Yes. Cool. So this is a gentleman by the name of Coulter from out in Manitoba. He created uh, Crokinole Cards. So what these do is they allow you to add more variation to um, regular, like just normal Crokinole, but you add these, these, uh, these variants to it. So this card, just for an example, and I haven't actually played this, this card right here uh, means if you draw this card, then in the next round, you have to take one shot with your non-dominant hand. Oh, I don't even know that I've done that. That's horrible. It is. Oh, yeah, yeah. My oldest son, Reed, and I used to sit down like once a week, and we would play a few games left-handed. It's a non-dominant game? Yeah, and it's uh, it's humbling. It's humbling. Hi. <laughs> All right, great. Uh, this one, take one less disc in your next round. So they're just things that allow uh, just to throw some variation. Yeah. And I mean, there'd be some people who could use these who just, they would just use them to pick on the strongest player at the table. Okay. To say, okay, you have Hand to do these. Hand them a deck of cards and... And I don't know the details of it yet. I'm going to do a video just on this card game. Uh, but there is a way you can play solitaire. Interesting. Crokinole. So it just... Uh, it just sets up a puzzle for yeah, you? it sets up a puzzle that you have to accomplish in as few and shots then you've got, as you yeah, want. And then you've got a I scoring think. system related to the, the, yeah. the shots. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I don't I don't know all the details on it, but we didn't want to do a super deep dive on these. So, uh, yeah, there's that is one that I haven't played. The next one on our Number list. Number seven. This one, uh, the same gentleman, he uh, he co-created this one with my friend Steve Brown over at Brown Castle. Okay. And we're going to have this up on the site too. This one I have had the opportunity to play. I played it with uh, Steven and his family the other night. A hoot and a half. So, there are... There's three different types of cards. There's the Sub Rosa, and what these ones do is before each round, every player gets one of these, but you keep it secret. So nobody knows that you have that, and at some point during the round, if you are able to accomplish this challenge, okay. you get a point. Interesting. So how, you many, get, how many points? Um, just one point for career, for completing okay. that challenge. So we were doing it at a race to ten points. So you, I got you. So you're doing it as a point system. Yes, you got a you got a point if you won the round by traditional crokinole scoring, and you also got a point if you accomplished your challenge. That's big. Yeah. So this one here knocked two opponents' discs off with one shot. But the other people at the table, not knowing what your card is, yeah. Then you see someone make a shot, and you're going, "What, what are you trying what to do? Do that for?" And they're sitting there being like, oh, "I didn't do it. Don't worry." <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to reveal until. So there's another set here that are uh, like negatives, uh, basically things that make it more challenging for you in that okay. round. So some similarities with that game because sure. one of the creators is the same. She'll be drawing stuff up and you'll be like, I'm debuffed in this way. Yes. So, and then the, the last one. And that could be fun to have those cards and like, like have a hand of them and play one against your opponents. Yes. Every round. Yeah. And so there, yeah, there's those that, that, that impact individual players, but they've also got a whole set of cards that it impacts the board. Okay. The entire board for every player. This one here, for example, all regions are worth five points at the end of the round. Hmm. So it doesn't matter whether your disc is here or here, it has the same point value. Interesting. Even 20s have the same point value. Interesting. So it just changes strategy. Uh, yeah, because yeah. now you want to live. You just yeah. want board presence. Yep. Yep. Uh, after a valid shot, you may stack your disc on any disc involved in the play. Disc score as five points for each disc underneath. That's fun. Yeah, just uh, there's one that's called Moat. Here it is right here. Uh, discs in the 10 point region get removed at the end of the turn. <laughs> nice. It just completely changes yeah. the game. I so, like yeah, this. The, uh, yeah, we played a couple of games with that with uh, with his family the other night. And I really enjoyed it. A, a lot of fun. Yeah. So again, that's uh, just a fun variation. Uh, in my heart and in my mind, it's never going to replace 
the pure traditional crokinole. I, but I love crokinole so much, I like opportunities to screw with it. Oh, 100%. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right. Number eight. What do we have? Number eight. This one has to come with a warning. Okay. A big, big caveat? Big caveat. Sure. I'm not recommending this. Apply okay. this at your own risk. Okay. And I blame West for this. All right. So we, our group, like sitting down at 2 a.m. after we've responsibly played all of our other board games. We have a few glasses, you know, a few, a little bit of like our, our an old fashioned left or a beer or two. And we just keep going to like four in the morning. So our group advocated for a drinking game to be included on this, and you were not entirely a fan of including that on the list. Well, it was it was pretty much, I had a target on my back. They were trying to even the playing field, so sure. the way we played it, and it's just a suggestion, they, they deemed me to be the stronger player at the table, so I played all five of you, one yep. after the other. Video coming soon. Anytime they sank a 20, I had to drink. Okay. Anytime I missed an open 20, I had to drink. Yeah. Yeah, it worked well. You got to play me last, so I mean, it, yeah, it, so. it didn't it didn't help that much. Uh, <laughs> that being said, but no, just just any any variation on drinking games. I think the twenty was the easiest thing for us yeah, to yeah, line up yeah. in terms of like you pull it, you you know, and you yep. could do it just if you sink a twenty, your opponent drinks; they sink a twenty, you drink. Yeah, um, just sort of a back and forth push and shove. Yeah, uh, simple little system like that. Yeah, absolutely. Could yeah. even do it like if you whiff a shot, you know, things things like that. Like yep. any any counter to that. So number uh, nine, we're up number to nine, nine at this point, and yeah, this one I, I would direct people to go to my YouTube channel to check out some of the cool. drills. We'll leave that the link we down have. below. Yep. So uh, just as an example, there's one drill that we have. We call it the outside in. So you start with all eight buttons, um, just outside each of the pegs, okay. and then you have eight shots to score the best score you can. Eight so shots you, to score the best score you yes. can. Yes. So you're trying to, and valid shots are the same. You have to contact an opponent. Interesting. So um, over the like, you make your eight shots. If you've cleared everything out with six shots because you had some you've double got, takeouts, you've got open. Then you've got open twenties. But whatever's left on the board at the end. So if this is like, pretend that's not a five. Yeah, hole. yeah, yeah. If that's how the board ended, your opponent who started on the board still has twenty points on the board, and you have twenty points on the board. Your score is zero. Cool. But yeah, if all your opponents are knocked off and you've got 20s or buttons on here, that's, fun. that's your score. So there's a couple great things about this is uh, you play by yourself. Yep. Um, so then you sit down and you get a score of 45 points and then you go, I wonder if I can beat that. So you just quickly set it up again and you see if you can beat your score. The other thing that I know people have done is they challenge a friend over Zoom. Mm -hmm. So simple, sure. you just have it there and you go, okay, I'm gonna go first. Okay, I got 35, can you beat that? Bet you can't beat that. And you can do this. Uh, just the back and forth. That's just one of the drills we have. We have a number of different drills like that, that uh, every one of them absolutely works on different skills. Set like up this a challenge and let you just practice the game, learn the yep. game and have something fun to play against instead of just ambiently shooting. Yes, yeah, I mean, one of the most important skills in crokinole is open 20s hmm. even as a lover of crokinole it's just sitting and shooting open 20 open 20 open 20 gets, over over gets a little bit yeah gets a little bit numbing after a while yeah but like that one i just set up it teaches you a couple of different skills one is your angle in 20s oh, really and the other yeah you can show edit that to make it look off. like i missed yeah <laughs> the other is it helps you work on your double takeouts so which i i missed that one so you don't need to edit that and this game's so good, I just want to sit and play it. Yep. What's number 10? What are we going to? Number 10 is, and this is a, a, a game that I learned about, or a variation that I learned about visiting my good friends at the Extra Pint Crokinole in Voorheesville, New York. Okay. And uh, they do this on the Friday night before their tournament. We sit down and we have what is called a whole survivor tournament. Whole survivor tournament. So you okay. can, have, I mean, with this, the cool thing about this is you could have eight people sitting around the board. Hmm. As long as you've got room around there because you've got eight channels. So the, the normal way to play it is everybody gets three buttons. So you start with three buttons. Doesn't even matter if somebody else at the table has the same colors. It really doesn't matter. But you've got three buttons. If you shoot and you miss, it goes in the gutter. Okay. If you sink it, it goes back in your pile. Okay. So it goes around until like once you've missed all three of your shots, you're done. And those who have been sinking, so get I to live keep another going. round. Now. You live another round. So it's just a death match. Yes. It's just with just with just open open 20. twenty death match, which which lets you practice the important skill. Yep. 
and but also, it's still got a, a competitive, fun, like you're shoot, you're not just sitting there in your basement like, oh, okay, I'm going to shoot another time. There's pressure because you don't want to lose. And you could play with, you could do eight people playing this. Yeah, yeah, because it's, you've got it's eight fun to, It's fun to just watch, you know, it's fun to just watch everyone going for the open 20s, yep. right? The other great thing about this is you can you can scale it. So if you have a more experienced player, if you want it to be really mean, you, you could get go, one disc. You get one button. Yeah. Or you go the other way, and if there's less experienced players, you go, you West know what? It's one, eight. Why don't you start yeah. with eighteen? Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. So that's just a it's just a fun challenge. And again, it's not so, like you're probably not going to sit and play whole Survivor for three hours. It's not as addictive as the other you know, variations. But what I but would it do is, with this list is I would make like notes of five of them that I'm excited about. Yep. And in the mix of playing yeah, through yeah. Oh, a seven-hour crokinole session, which do happen, I just throw in a few of them. I'm like, hey, let's, <laughs> real quick, let's do let's do our practice. Like, let's start the session. Yeah. Let's do everyone gets three deaths. Let's do our practice twenties. Yep. Because everyone wants a warm-up shot. Yep. Let's do that as a game. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, yeah. That's ten, but I've actually got an eleven. Do you have an I'm, extra? I do. I did. I have a bonus. Okay. Just All for right. you. What is just it? Just for you. Uh, just a slight variation of uh, a more traditional style, and it is two versus one. So what you would do is the person would sit by themselves here okay. with 12 buttons. Their two opponents would sit here and here with six buttons each. Okay. It works like regular doubles, but the person shooting by themselves shoots on behalf, I call him my imaginary friend. My imaginary doubles partner, his name is Jim So Ball. you still go one, one, two, yep. you know. So it goes, I shoot, that player shoots, I shoot, I shoot on behalf of Jim Bob, then you shoot, then I shoot, and it goes around the cool. table. And uh, the fun thing with that is that you just take turns being the person that's on their own. It's just fun to have more buttons. So it's just, yeah, uh, sure. Yeah, it's just a, a great... And you're disadvantaged because your angle isn't as good. Yeah, the, you got I more mean, buttons, more control, but your angle's worse. Yes. Uh, if if your your two opponents are able to get play over on this side of the board, if they can keep you over there, then they, yeah, I mean, they like have a my, pile of control. Like my first shot's that. Well, no, that's not a valid shot. <laughs> I know, I know. I know. <laughs> but you know what I mean. Yes. But yeah, if you can work the play over there by yeah. using valid shots, then you're you're going to put the one at a disadvantage. But cool. the most important thing is you have to come up with a really cool name for your imaginary partner. Mine's Jim Bob, so that's okay. taken. That's reasonable. But uh, Mine's Wes Todd. Wes Todd? Okay. That's just an imaginary friend. Thank you so much for watching. Let us know which of these variants do you play? What ones did we not mention that you all like? And what are your favorite house rules for Crokinole? Because you like collecting them. You like seeing what's out there in yeah, the yeah. world. Yeah, for sure. So yeah. thanks for being here. Whatever the case, whatever you do, remember, do the important thing. Go buy a Crokinole board. They're that good. <laughs> I'm telling you. It's the only board game you might need. The greatest game on earth. Bye.